presentation here, and I will turn it right on over um, to our Parks and Recreation Director, Tim Beaker. So, thank Tim, you, Mayor. Feel free to take it away. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, first of all, I want to do thank the Recreation Department as a whole for helping me put this uh, slideshow and presentation together for you. So, um, first, I was going to start with a little background on uh, what we'll go over this evening. It's basically a department overview, uh, Westfield, Westfield Center, Deficiencies and Solutions, uh, Kennedy Recreation Center, and uh, a recreational wrap-up. Um, starting with a little bit of a background on the Recreation Department as a whole, uh, the Recreation Department has 18 parks, six tennis courts, nine baseball softball fields, four basketball courts, four roller hockey rinks, the Elizabeth Park Marina, the Rotary Park Boat Ramp, the Cultural Center, the Kennedy Aquatic Center, and as we get forward into this, uh, the main focus for today will be the Westfield Activities Center. Um, the Recreation Department uh, includes skating, hockey, competitive swimming, swim lessons, fishing, boating, basketball, baseball, softball, tennis, pickleball, senior social groups, senior card groups, special needs camps, art and crafts, and much, much more that take place in all of these facilities. I uh, just want to take some time to go over the Westfield Center. As we, uh, we look at these different things, this, the Westfield Activity Center hosts more than a dozen fitness classes for a variety of levels of activity. Uh, weekly <coughs> civic organization meetings, monthly club meetings, senior dance clubs, senior social groups, dozens of different game groups, including cards, bridge, uh, bunco, and such. Graduation parties, cheerleading, sports banquets, small food pantry, and a medical equipment loan closet, and much, much more that, we ta that takes place out of this facility. It was actually brought to my attention earlier today. Uh, somebody asked, well, why can't we leave uh, the facility set up a certain way um, for every weekly meeting? And I said, well, because there's a lot that happens in between. And I, hopefully this can get it across that we do do many different things. Uh, the facility itself is programmed from about 8 a.m. until um, 9 or 10 p.m., depending on the night. So, The Westfield Center needs help. Um, it's an honor that this building gets used for so many activities, and so many people do use it. The facility has seen its wear and tear over time. As part of the fire, police, and municipal uh, building improvement bond, the Recreation Department will see improvements at the Westfield Activities, Activities Center affecting everyone who uses the building. The Westfield Center has many issues that have occurred due to erosion of soils, water tables, and structural deficiencies. As you see in these four exterior pictures, water is drained poorly and penetrated areas of the external brick, creating problems with lentils, foundations rotting away. Uh, in your top left picture, you can definitely see where the, uh, the wood structure behind uh, the block that was moved away um, is completely deteriorated and falling. You can see where the grade level was, has now become up a little bit too high on there. Uh-oh. We'll check this and see if we have some battery. We'll see how that goes. Um, so the, uh, anyways, when you look at uh, some of the walkways there, you also see that the drainage has, has definitely differed over time. Part of this is erosion of soils, moving around um, and also water coming off of the building. And a lot of this also has to do with the water table in the ground and where we've seen significant changes over the probably the past five to six years. Uh, we've gone for some of our driest period of time to some of our wettest periods of time over that period. Um, so the decay in the foundation um, in, the, in the main banquet room, and I'll get to those slides here real quick. As we look at this, we see our, if you've been into the facility before, you'll notice that our main banquet hall actually slopes to the west. Um, and we lost the slides there, so I do apologize. Let's see what we can do.
Awesome. Okay. Thank you, sir. We are right back to where we left off. <laughs> Oops. Maybe. All right. So as we looked at where we are at um, in here, and I do apologize, we checked everything on the computer except for the power. So uh, that, that was my, my fault. I apologize for that. Um, we looked in at the, the West Banquet Hall, or the Banquet Hall actually moves to the West, which is also the West Banquet Hall. Um, and we see the, the cement actually separating and moving in the room itself. These are some um, investigative work uh, that was done a couple years ago, but it also shows what the deficiencies and voids are underneath the cement slab of the building. Um, in the top left picture, you can actually see where the wall has moved away from the floor. Um, that floor has actually dropped below it. In the top right picture, you can see um, that there is no dirt and there is some voids underneath the cement floor itself. Um, in the bottom left, you can actually see it's, they got a measurement uh, included in there. It's up to four inches of gap between the actual flooring, cement flooring, and some of that uh, uh, fill underneath it. So there's some definite issues. We've seen that move over time. Um, some of the some of the best ways we've overcome that in the past has been to uh, take the, the molding and lower it down so you don't see the changing in the wall. Um, but you definitely notice it if you're walking that way. Uh, and hopefully people having uh, different beverages at graduation parties don't walk that way too often. Um, but anyways, we, so we'd like to, those are definite things and deficiencies that we see in the building. Uh, we found large voids, like I say, up to four inches. So will lead to the floor sinking more over time if it's, because it is not tied directly into the foundation itself of the building. So we will see as that, as that continues to erode, we hopefully our water table is a little bit lower than it was a few years ago. Um, we won't see it erode as much, but there is large potential for it to do so. Um, some additional building problems. Broken transitions, uh, as you can see in the top left corner, uh, it can be upgraded with new flooring. Slanted counters and sinks can be removed and re reinstalled so that we could, um, again, we're getting into that leveling issue of the floor that we see. And you can actually see how those aren't necessarily straight across on the, on the picture on the far right. Um, we, we also need, as we look down in the middle picture, we see the deck uh, that is there. That deck is, is quite old and has seen its wear and tear, unfortunately. Um, as you see, it's not always directly in the sun, and when it does get damp, it holds a lot of water. So that, uh, that structure is due to be replaced. Um, we've worked with the DPS over, over years to replace uh, pieces of it, um, but I, it is definitely beyond time um, to replace this deck, which would provide more seating, more opportunity for programming. Um, it would provide more opportunity for uh, people utilizing the facility. Our seniors could take breaks out there, um, and have access to a lot of different things that we could, that we used to and it was intended for. Improvements will include a few different things that, that will go on in the facility. Improvements such as ADA accept, accessible amenities that will make uh, movement in and out and around the facility much easier. The entryways will be leveled off with better pavement and transitions so that patrons can enter and exit without worry. Um, we've, had, we've recently um, had some issues that have occurred over at the Westfield Center and some of our seniors, it does take them longer to get in and out of the building. Um, part of it is, is they're moving a little bit slower, but also our walkways are not the easiest to maneuver sometimes. And at this point, um, getting through there, if we can create zero barrier entries and exits for them, it would make things a lot more accessible and easier so that they can get through quicker um, and maintaining you know, a warmer facility, maintaining a cooler facility in the summer, and just a, all around better access for them and everyone that, that would attend the facility. So the other thing that we'd be upgrading, and you'll see, is improved lighting. This kind of ties right back into some of those ADA upgrades, safer entrances and walkways. Uh, making sure that we can add additional lighting around the entryways, exits, parking lots, also making sure it's a brighter facility in the inside so that people um, can read better, can see better, enjoy those card games with a little bit more uh, light coming in. 
the building is a great building, has many, uh, many windows all the way around it, but unfortunately the way that the, the roofing is designed and has maintained over the years does not allow a lot of light in through the building. Um, so that's why that lighting would definitely be necessary. The bathrooms would be upgraded to commercial facilities to allow for larger stalls and even potential family restrooms. Um, currently our, our bathrooms are um, at, as a residential grade, I would say, somewhere in between a residential and a full commercial. But then again, this is the, the changing of times from, uh, well, now I'm dating myself to when I graduated high school because that's about when the, uh, the facility was last updated. So that has been quite a while. Um, and it's time to bring those up to standards and up to mm. new uh, quality controls and things of that nature so that we can have more accessible and more usable uh, restrooms for everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. As we look at this, uh, the renewal of outdoor seating, we touched uh, briefly on that a little bit before on the deck structure outside. The deck itself is just, it's seen much better days. Um, as I was out there looking around um, the other day and walking through it just to try and uh, give me some ideas of what I could discuss and talk with you all about. Um, because of the age of the, the material and the, the degrading of it, a lot of, a lot of critters, a lot of insects and a lot of other things have made their homes in that in that deck area. Um, unfortunately, it, it just doesn't make it very appealing for either young children or adults that don't want to deal with the uh, very large wasps or uh, bees that may be flying in the area. And so putting in new structures, putting in new wood, um, cleaning that up, those are different things that would help us and go a long way with providing a safer, calmer area for everybody to enjoy. We will see an increased, we are also looking for an increase in dedicated storage for our loan closet and small pantry, small food pantry. Over the last couple of years, our senior groups have, uh, have come to us and said we do definitely need a small food pantry um, located in the facility. This is by no means a food pantry that over, oversteps the larger one that takes place in the city, um, but it, is, it does work for our seniors that visit our facility on a regular basis. Um, it's kind of like a, uh, they drop off in a cabinet and some other seniors can walk in and not feel overwhelmed or, you know, guilt or anything of the nature to be able to go through it without being judged, I should speak. Um, so that it's, it's been a great addition to the facility over the last couple of years. It's also created some storage deficiencies that we face with some of the, uh, some of the items that are brought in. Um, we do have a very large uh, medical loan closet that takes place in the facility. This is used on a daily basis. This is open to all the residents of the city of Trenton. Um, whether it's wheelchairs, whether it's crutches, whether it's walkers, whether it's toilet seats, whether it's shower chairs, um, whether it's um, anything of that sort, uh, we have made available, we have knee scooters. Um, those things are available at a small rental fee uh, to any of our residents that may need those at that time. At that point in time, the, it's a deposit. When you return the, the item, you get your deposit back. So it's been a great um, offering for the city and has been going on for years and years and has continued to grow. Most of the time, we actually see a lot of our patrons, when they return things, realize that they don't want the deposit back. They've donated it back to the loan closet itself. Um, and it's been great to see that go right back into the equipment that we can rebuy and have it available for somebody else at a, at a later date. So. So as a whole, as we look at the, uh, at the Westfield Center, these are all of the things that we would hope to see um, with, the, with the bond approval. Um, and this is what we would look at from that. Our next slide just briefly discusses the Kennedy Recreation Center parking lot. Another large improvement that would be part of the Fire Police Municipal Building Improvement Bond is the repairs to the Kennedy Recreation Center parking lot. This would allow for easier biking and walking from the path along the Franken Poet Drain. The back of the parking lot includes a park for kids and is a main thoroughfare for pedestrians walking to and from the different areas of town, including the Kennedy Aquatic Center, the library, the Westfield Center, and the high school. So as there is an entrance to the path behind our facility, as you can see in these quick little pictures that we took, unfortunately, it's not very accessible at this point in time. 
and it, the parking lot has seen some deficiencies. So we will hope to see some things move on that. In conclusion, the Fire Police and Municipal Building Improvement Bond will bring many needed facility upgrades to the Recreation Department. If you have any questions or comments, my phone is and door are always open. Please feel free to reach out and discuss a proposal at any time. Uh, make sure you to catch Chief Hawkins and the Police Department speak at the Westfield Center on June 3rd following the council meeting. It's also a great time to check out the facility for yourself if you have not been there in a while. So we hope to see you there. Great. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so now we'll yeah, open it up to council for questions here. Does anyone have any uh, questions on Tim's presentation and initial thoughts? Councilwoman Hornbeck? Uh, looking at all the structural deficiencies, it makes me wonder, is it, is it worth the investment? In the, I mean, is, that, is it, I guess, like the, all the structural problems, mm -hmm. are those going to keep reoccurring even if we fix them? Uh, there is some plans in place to, to fix those permanently. I say permanently. Um, unfortunately, no matter what we do, yeah. uh, everything it has a time life uh, right. expectancy to it. But I think it's the idea and concept behind it is we can put some repairs that are, and I, they're way beyond Band-Aids. Um, they're actually full-fledged repairs that would allow that facility to sustain a lot longer and be used for years to come without issue. Councilman Perugia? Yeah, I'd like to piggyback on Emily. I had the same sort of question that if we do this, is there any kind of gauge of what that duration will be before we really need to do it again, per perhaps? I mean, that's a very good question. I, I think when we look at those types of things, we try to maintain and look to see uh, what where we're at in 20 years from now. Um, and, I, and I think that's always been a good practice on our part is to try and look at facilities for 20, even 10 to 15 years out. Um, I, I, I would assume, again, I know what that does, but um, we, through what we've looked through and the research we've done, it would make things more substantial. And we never know where, again, our water tables are going to be. We don't know what our best case or worst case scenario is, but we do know what an average assumption can lead us to believe um, that we should be able to sustain the building for no, no less than 20 plus years. Right. Um, I'd love to say I was only out of high school for 20 years, but I think that's been a little bit longer than that. Um, and that was probably the last time that it's seen a major upgrade, so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else got questions for Tim? Great. Well, uh, yeah, seeing no other questions for you, Tim, I just want to say thank you again. Um, yeah, we'll have this presentation. will be posted online um, along with the slideshow. Um, and again, just want to encourage folks to tune in uh, two weeks from now as well when we have our council meeting and study session both at the Westfield Center. Um, so get a, a look inside that building, and then we'll also have a presentation at that time um, from Chief Hawkins to talk about the police department facilities as well. Um, so one last call for questions from council. and. Seeing any, we'll go to public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.04 p.m. So moved. Thank you. Adjourned at 8.04 p.m. Thank you all very much.